you're alive hello live so i just need to work out now how to view this uh events let's refresh that and live control room because i want to see if there are many oh yes there are some comments hello everybody stream status is bad well it can't be that bad is it really that bad i don't think it's that bad but i don't know how to get the comments just at the moment opening a new window that's the one i want Uh, that's interesting. Why has it done that? All right, well, I'll just go with those comments for the moment. So can everyone hear me? Can everyone see what's going on here? Can everyone see my new soldering iron? Color is a little bit off. Yeah, that's because, oh, well, actually, I could probably change that because um, these are these LEDs where I can go a bit warm white. How about that? Uh, reading. How about that? No, it's still a bit yuck, isn't it? Nice TS100. Yes, this is the uh, TS100 soldering iron. And I'm actually going to power it up. Oh, of course, I've got a problem. I need my overhead lighting on, but I also want the soldering iron on. Mm, that's going to be interesting. Uh, hi, Adam. Hi, T. Komoski. Uh, who else have we got? We've got... Um... Because on my phone, I can only see the last three comments uh, on my screen. What I want to do is open that in a new window. Now, why isn't it doing it? No super chats or something or other. Super chat open in a new window. No, I don't want that. Oh, hang on. Maybe it's these three dots. Pop out chat. <laughs> That's what I want. It's amazing, isn't it, how difficult going live is. Perhaps if I did it more often. It would be a bit easier. Let's put that on the left of my screen so that I can see it. Good. Okay. Hi from Brazil. Hi from Poland. Greetings from Poland. Good evening. I'm powering my TS100 from an 18 stroke 20 volt power tool battery. That's a good idea. Yeah, because I got lots of those Ryobi batteries. I'll put my hands in shot so that you, <laughs> you at least know that I'm here. Color is a little off. Yeah, it will be because I'm using two overhead lights. That one up there is the one I bought from Lidl which was really cheap. That one up there is the Orky one. Um, let me just see if I can go fully warm white on that one. I think I'm fully warm white on that one already. Yeah, reading. Yeah, fully warm white. Relaxation mode. Oh, how about sleep mode? Ah, that's better. That's as warm as I can get the warm white to go. Hi from Spain. Hey, Julian, what TS100 tip are you using? That's a very good question. Shall I find out? I'm going to have to have a close look. It's off at the moment, so it's not hot. I'm using the TSI. Now, I did actually make a video on this today, but I haven't got around to editing it yet. So you'll see my unboxing of this um, as my next video, probably. Yeah, TSI. Uh, from Iraq. Interesting. Hi from Denmark, from India. TSC one is the best tip. Oh, I don't know which one that is. Hang on a minute. Um, because here is the uh, set. And I'm very lucky. Because Banggood very kindly sent me the whole lot. Yes, all nine of them. So you've got seven of these. And then you've got these two, which have this kind of almost like a smokestack thing on them. Yeah, that's not a very English phrase, is it? Like an exhaust pipe with sort of holes drilled in them. I haven't quite worked out what these are yet. Um, but yeah, they're all here, which is excellent. Got the uh, cable for, um, what's that for? That's for a LiPo. Yeah, and I have to say that so far, I'm really liking this soldering one. So I am going to power it up. And I am going to solder some components on here, and I've got the components. I'm not going to overdo it because, you know, I don't want to bust a gut here, but I'm going to solder a BAV99 dual diode on. And I'm also going to solder on a couple of 47 ends, which go up at this end here. I need my glasses for this. I can't see the screen. Hi, Julian from Flitwick. 
vaguely heard of that. Where's that? Where's f it's probably called Flitic or something like that, isn't it? Um, hi from the Netherlands. Oh, it's Maiko. Maiko. Hi, Maiko. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to solder um, these components on. Also, uh, a couple of tantalums. Actually, one tantalum. Where did you print your PCB? Well, that was JLC PCB, these people here. And in fact, we've got double sponsorship here, really, because JLC PCB provided the uh, PCB, of course. And Banggood sent me this iron. So, mm, now I've got a bit of a problem now. How do I power that iron? Been soldering a few BAV 199. Oh, sorry, it comes up on my display about here. That's irrelevant to you. How are you, Julian? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Western Canada, Lincolnshire, JLC PCB, yep, that's correct. Uh, big thumbs up. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. I use Plumber's Flux. It's the best setup. Then I rinse my board when fully populated. Okie dokie. How bad is the rain where you are at the minute? I don't think there's any rain, actually. No rain here. Uh, would you consider looking at my sound mixer and mic amp and low pass filter yeah that sort of thing's difficult because you say yes and then you start on it and it takes weeks and weeks and weeks and i've been caught out so many times that i kind of have to sort of turn things like that down uh my voice what's that about my voice julian your voice sounds a little different probably using a webcam microphone no i'm using the um doji mix phone it's really nice actually it's got a really big screen and of course it's got a standard phone microphone so it's going to be quite uh, compressed it's going to be voxed you know but generally phones make a pretty good job of uh, giving good audio so i think that's okay do a muppet video okay i will not right now this is pwm5 live this is the pwm5 and i'm going to solder some more components on Oh, I'm going to need the battery voltage for that as well. I'm going to need a multi-multi-splitter, aren't I? Let me get a multi-multi-splitter. Sending big love for Simone. Yeah, I just saw something come up about Simone. I'm sure that's what you mean. Uh, right, splitter. Right, here is my uh, box of 2.1 mil and 2.5 mil cables. Yes, it's pink. Uh, what have I got? There's a five-way splitter in here. This is it. Good evening from Sheffield. My soldering iron brock broke, I presume you mean. Um, yeah, that's a shame when your soldering iron breaks. Right, I have a one female to five males splitter Ooh, uh, yeah okay this is gonna drain <laughs> drain my battery okay let's just hoik that out uh, so that goes in there so i'm going into the splitter one of the splitter cables it's probably gonna look pretty horrid in that very dull lighting maybe it looks better actually maybe what i'll do is turn the overhead lighting down a bit and then those other cables um, which are there now, four of them I can use for the soldering iron. Let's turn that on, but let's bring the brightness right down. Let's turn this one on, bring the brightness down to minimum. How's that? Oh, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Be careful the iron don't burn the torch. <laughs> That's okay, they're um, separated by a good inch of height there, you can't see that. I'm sure the sun will shine tomorrow julian no guarantee no um it is going to warm up though isn't it it was extremely cold today i only went for one walk today i just couldn't face the second one right let's plug the soldering iron in um okay and you'll see that power up you can actually put your own little graphic on this soldering iron so i could have it come up juju or something which would be quite fun wouldn't it uh, okay, so version 2.18 it is. Press, so I'm going to press that. I can't remember what I've set this to now. I think I've set it for... Oh, did I not press it? Oh, see what's happening? I'm pressing that. And my overhead lights are flickering. 
it can't do it. It can't power everything at the same time. Okay, uh, plan B. Yeah, there is a plan B. I'm going to take that out, which is connected to my um, battery. Probably because the voltage is so low now. It says 12.5. What's going on then? I don't know. I think I'll run it from a LiPo. Right, let's do some comments. Now, strictly speaking, this PWM5 Live um, is intended to be questions and answers about the PWM5 solar charge controller. But that doesn't stop anyone asking any question, really. No, no, not really. Um, yeah, I'm going to get the cable that came with this TS100, which is this little cable. Um, which has an XT60 on it, and I'm going to find a LiPo because um, basically I haven't got enough power <laughs> to run everything. I haven't got enough power. That's really bad, isn't it? Not enough power in my solar power system. I'm going to have to beef it up a bit. Right, I need a life LiPo, LiPo, LiPo. Should be one in here. Oh, um, yeah. 14.8 volts. I hope this LiPo can um, hold out for the whole session. Otherwise, this video is going to be a bit rubbish, isn't it? Oh, that's nice and flexible, that. Very flexible. So let's plug that into this LiPo. 14.8 volts. It might be a bit higher than that if it's freshly charged. And let's plug that into the soldering iron. Right, what have we got? Let's switch it on. 25 degrees, that's more like it. And it's warming up. See that warming up? How many amps does the soldering iron need? Um, I think at this voltage, it's probably only going to be about 25 watts. So it's about an amp, uh, amp and a half, something like that. Um, the elastic band code. Yes, now that... <laughs> Okay, I'll let you know what the elastic band code. I'm thinking of actually doing some popular numbers with the elastic band code. So the, probably the last one, oh, I can smell that iron coming on. Probably the last one you saw was three whites, which um, should be 999. But actually what it meant was grey sky. That's all it meant, just grey sky. Three whites for grey. I don't actually have any grey. Uh, loom, these are loom bands. They were all the rage at one time. And it just meant that we've got a grey sky. And then on the day where I had the uh, blue, the yellow and the blue, that just meant it was sunny and blue skies. That's all it meant. But I am thinking of doing things like, I don't know, 555 or some popular uh, chip name, 741, that sort of thing. So look out for loom bands on the soldering iron with popular chip numbers. Yay! Okay, let's have a look. I got the TS100 about two weeks ago. I like it, but sometimes I seem to get shocked while using it. Yeah, you're probably using a mains power supply, aren't you? Plug it into a LiPo. You can't get a shock from a LiPo. Um, 65 watts at 24 volts. Yes, that's right. And then it drops at 12 volts. I think they say 17 watts. But now my Antex iron is 18 watts. Um, and I'm very familiar with that sort of level of power. Have you thought about making a kit for your gumstick PWM5? Um, not really, because I don't want to do all the shipping uh, shenanigans. It's doubly difficult when uh, you get orders from all over the world. And postage from the UK to pretty much anywhere, including next door, is alarmingly expensive. And uh, when I was selling these, um, that was, I mean, I did free shipping. It was factored into the price, of course. Uh, and postage was just always a pain. And queuing in the post office. I just don't like queuing in the post office. Are you planning on selling this version of the PWM5? No, um, but I am planning on making the uh, PCB layout. Uh, what is the PWM5? I'll come to that. I am planning to make the um, PCB design, the schematic, and the firmware. Uh, oh, gosh, that's a long comment. Uh, completely open source. So, uh, you are a proper legend. Oh, thanks very much. As the PWM5 is open source, would you be happy other people selling kits? Absolutely. Set up a little company, if you want, selling PWM5s. I will be entirely happy.
happy with that. I've got no problem with that at all. That's the whole point. It's all gone open source. Um, so it means I don't have to... Oh, here we are. Look, this has gone into standby mode now. It would have been on 250. Uh, what about a proper 5 amp MPPT? Yeah, MPPT is more complicated, as I'm sure you know. This would have been at... I think I set the default for 250. Uh, it's now gone into sleep. I set it to a one-minute sleep. So it's winding down to 180. It's hit 180, and it'll sit there on 180. And um, if you just disturb it a bit, because it's got accelerometers in here, it shoots back up to 280. It's so cool, this thing. I love it. And I love this little stand. This is made of ceramic. It's really heavy. Um, it's got a nice cork underside. Oh, I put some uh, little bits of solder in that thing there. You're meant to coil solder up and put it in the back there, but it is a bit tiny. Um, and it's really heavy and it just stays there. It's fantastic. So there we are, 280 degrees. In 60 seconds, that'll go back to 180 degrees. Yes, the PWM5 is a solar charge controller. It's pulse width modulated. It's 5 amp. And if you look at the back of a 36 cell uh, solar panel, you'll see that um, 100 watt solar panels have a short circuit current of about uh, 5 amps. So basically, this charge controller can take a 5 amp solar panel to battery charge current from a 100 watt solar panel maximum. That's what it is. Right, MPPT, yeah, well, I'll come back to MPPT. Muppet 2 is the new MPPT. How long do packages from Alice? One, yeah, that's, yeah. How long do they take? Well, it's varied in the past. It's been anything from seven days to, ooh, well, three weeks typically. Um, but there's this new speed pack thing. And um, yes, I'm just wondering whether speed pack is actually faster. Right. Now, Basic Micro UK, David Ellis, is saying we'll be happy to offer kits for these PWM5 projects. Well, that's excellent news. That's fantastic. I'm really pleased about that. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Just don't jump in too quickly because you might find that this circuit board changes um, perhaps more than once. Adam says, I'm a PWM5. I have an original. Yes, you do. I sent you one. Um, and I've made three or four Arduino versions. Really, is it that many? Actually, I was watching um, your Arduino PWM charge controller video the other day. It's quite old now, but uh, yeah, it was quite fun. Where can I get a soldering iron like that from Julian? This one, you can get this on eBay. I've seen it. You can get this from Banggood. I got this one from Banggood, hence the Banggood uh, advert there. I'm going to leave that there because it's a big thank you to Banggood in a sense. Uh, how many mistakes did you spot? What, in the video or in the actual charge controller? I don't, I don't remember spotting any, to be honest. Uh, Adam's in his shed. I'm sure you are. Is it cold, Adam? Because it was, it's saying six degrees outside now. It can't be very warm in your shed. Uh, I sent you a $5 uh, on Super Chat. Oh, I've never done Super Chat. How does that work then? Let me just scroll back up, because normally there's a big sort of flashy banner thing, isn't there, when that happens? I don't even know whether I got it switched on. So, yeah. Okay, well, thanks if you did. Thanks very much, but I'm not sure. I've never seen that before, Super Chat. And I can't see any um, sort of bold type or anything like that, so I'm not sure. Uh, sad about Maplin falling apart. Yeah, but inevitable, really. Um, how can they make money selling essentially what we buy on eBay with people like me saying, don't buy stuff from your local shop, buy it from China. Yeah, I mean, it, it was never going to survive. And their prices were high and they had to be high because um, store rents are high. Uh, how long will you be on tonight? Um, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Blimey, it's 26 minutes already. Crikey. Probably quite a long time then in that case, because I'm actually supposed to be doing something. 
this is cooling down again. Um, so I suppose I should start soldering, shouldn't I, really? Let's find some solder. So I want uh, 47 nanofarads. These are my 47 nanofarads, 50 volts. CPC are excellent. CPC Farnell, is that? Yeah, I bought my computer from CPC Farnell. So is that warm? 280. Yeah, and in fact, if you put that on there, it sucks all the heat out of it. Oh, let me try that again. Because you're not convinced, are you? Let's suck all the heat out of the iron and watch the temperature drop. There it goes. Yeah, there it goes. It's dropping. But it'll rise up again. That's running on a slightly higher voltage this time, so it's going to have a bit more power um, than I had when I was running it off 12 volts, so it should be better. Right, let's see if I can tin this tip. That'll be the next thing that causes me jip. I'm not supposed to say jip, am I? Someone said that was offensive. Right, let's just tack the right hand pad there. Oh, that's a very big blob of solder. Wasn't really intending for it to be that big. 280 degrees is fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, it seems all right. These are tiny, tiny surface mount components. Now we need a couple of 47 ends. Right, while I'm opening this, what's being said? Uh, Julian, how often have you been charged import duty on your items from China? Well, almost never, because they're all declared as $2 or whatever, even if expensive items come in. Um, but once or twice, I have got caught out and had to pay that. I need some scissors, really, don't I? Um, where are my pliers? These pliers weren't very good at getting this tape off. Right, I need two of those. So there are, there they are. They're quite tiny. Uh, let's put this back in its bag. Right, what are people saying? The PWM5 is a great success on the internet. Uh, not sure what you mean by that, really. I mean, it sold well. I was selling it for about four years. Um, and I sold very nearly a thousand. I didn't quite get to a thousand. What temp does the iron max out at? Uh, 400 degrees. Uh, what did he say that was offensive? Jip. Jip. I don't think jip's offensive. But I was told it was once. 400 degrees there and PWM5. Yes, I sold almost um, a thousand of them. Right. Um, now, this is, I think, the BAV99. It says A7, I'm pretty sure. So let's get one out and just check that it says A7. Except that I can't get that to draw back. There we are. Tip one out. Oh, wow, that's very small. Yeah, the UK sellers are awesome. And, you know, I have bought a lot of this stuff from companies like Rapid, Farnell, uh, RS. But the problem is that's no use to my overseas viewers. That's fine for the UK viewers, but I probably have more... USA viewers than UK so there are several websites dedicated to PWM5 <laughs> what really are you sure is it the same thing I find that quite surprising right okay let's go for um, attaching one of these uh, yeah so I picked this up the accelerometers have detected that I wiggled it a bit it immediately goes back up to uh, the full set temperature which is super duper handy Let's see if I can get this on without looking like a complete idiot. Right, I need to push it down now. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Let's do this one. So what it seems I need to do is heat that up and then go on top of the component to put some... No, oh, that one didn't work terribly well at all, really. I'm coming in at the wrong angle, I think. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Um, right, I think I'm going to turn that round to do the other side. So let's flip that round. Oh, where are they? Oh, they're right over there. So I need it kind of there. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, 
Flux. Oh, well, all right. I've got a flux pen here, look. I just have it on my desk as a sort of token gesture. Uh, okay, flux. So what I found seems to work quite well is get this little piece of white plastic, get some flux out of the pen just on there. You can see uh, just a bit of flux on there and then just grab it, bit of flux on there. And let's go for it. Let's solder the other side of these two with my solder. Oh, I can't see this very well. I'm at a funny old angle. Mm, that's going to be tricky. Do you remember me saying that the tall components wouldn't be a problem? Well, they are. However, those two are on there now. So that's really half of the components. I um, Is your website still operational? No. No, no. I think I mentioned, didn't I, in the live stream, the last live stream I did, my websites uh, are down and will stay down indefinitely because my ISP, my service provider, said to me, you're spamming some sort of finance website. And I thought, am I indeed? And then I did some reading and there was something about a Georgie exploit. And I thought, well, then my my WordPress has been hacked, hasn't it? And I thought, can I really be bothered? to make sure I've got all the latest updates and blah, blah, blah. I thought, no, I can't be bothered. I'll just stick posts now on Facebook or Patreon, probably Patreon, actually. Uh, right, so there's the little BAV99. I was going to check that, wasn't I? Right, let's read some comments. Don't sneeze or you'll lose all your parts. Yeah, I probably will. Um, will the supercapacitor Bluetooth speaker use a buck boost module? Well, it may use two. It may use one between the charger and the supercapacitors, and it may use another one between the supercapacitors and the amplifier. However, it may just as well, or just as likely, use neither. I, I simply don't know whether I'm going to need buck boosts before the capacitors, or after, and after, or neither. I don't know. The Banggood card on your cutting mat is reflecting, and you can't see it. Oh, that's no good, is it? That won't... Uh please bang good at all. How's that? That's better, isn't it? Yeah. I can't see it very well because there's loads of, just at this point here, there's loads of icons on the screen. Oh, wow. Yes, there's an icon there that says 17 pounds. Is that the super chat thing? I think it is. And it's gone up to 19 pounds. That's unbelievable. I think that's because I um, ticked a little box when I started this going. Yes, that's the super chat. Yes, I think that is the super chat. Uh, last day for taxes. Yeah, probably is last day. Is it last day for taxes? No, um, April April the fifth, um, April the sixth, isn't it? The the tax uh, crossover. I think we've missed the old tax thing. Right. I wanted to see whether that had. Uh, so thanks um, to everyone who's done a super chat. Nineteen pounds. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so what have we got here? A7. That's the BAV99. What about GitHub instead of Facebook posts or WordPress? Yeah, I mean, I suppose I should use GitHub. Um, actually, what I'm really hoping is that someone will sort of take this on and do a GitHub in their own name and have all the versioning. You know, GitHub's complicated. I don't want to have to learn it. It's complicated. Um, whereas if you use haste bin, it's very, very simple. You just shove it up there and it kind of does some basic uh, formatting and you're done. You don't have to worry too much. So I like haste bin. Bit of solder there, I think. Right, so that one is D3 and it goes down here. Ooh. Okay, let's try and get that on there. You can outsource your web. Uh, what did you say? You can outsource your web, GitHub, and stuff to me. Well, um, anyone who's seriously thinking of making kits for this thing or selling them, then do the whole GitHub thing um, if you want. It's just that I have to spend most of my time dreaming up new ideas for videos. You'd be surprised how much energy that takes. 
ah, I didn't really leave it long enough, did I? I waggled it to get it back up to temperature, but I need to kind of leave, uh, leave it. What was your final solder paste dispensing solution? <laughs> yes, you haven't seen it yet, have you? I solved it, but I haven't gone back to, uh, what's the project? Yes, yeah, the 8-bit computer, isn't it, that I'm going to use solder paste. I, I don't need to use solder paste. I could just solder them on like I soldered that chip on. Just tack a corner pin on and solder it on. But I wanted to use solder paste. I've never done solder paste before, and it was quite fun. Right, so let's flip that thing round. I'm going to have problems with this, aren't I? Because I need to tack the right-hand pins. Oh, I'm going to have to turn this round. So let's turn that round. Yeah, the solder paste um, dispenser now works. It's fabulous. That's going to be tricky because it's right over there. Can you see it? Am I close enough? That's oh, there's another um, super chat. Swedish krona fifty. Thanks very much for the fifty Swedish krona. It was about a fiver, I think. Right now, can I get that on? Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. And I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on. It's not very good. Where's my iron stand? That wasn't very good, was it? It's kind of on, but it's not on. I'm going to come back to this way. Can I do this with the tweezers in my right hand and the soldering iron in my left hand? Because that's really what I need to do. There's, there's my lipo. Let's put the lipo there. That's actually powering the soldering iron at the moment. Oh, I see the problem. It's right next to the chip. Oh, yes. I didn't think about that, did I? Oh, it's not even on there. <laughs> it's shot away down here. Okay, let's turn it. Fortunately, it's not a FET, so it's not going to be bothered by... Oh, I can't get out of the right way around. It's not going to be bothered by static or anything like that. But can I get that to sit in there? Not very well. No. I'm left-handed, but I sold a right-handed. Soldering with the wrong hand. Oh yeah, I can solder with either hand. Come on, it's easy. Let's put that up there, the wrong way round. Should be alright. I really need a magnifying glass because I can't see what I'm doing. How close to... Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a little bit out of bonk. Uh, if I nudge him, I can put it on at a slight angle. Okay, let's solder that. the iron hot. Mm. Problem is the camera is in the way. This is always the problem. The camera is in the way. But it has to be there. Doesn't it? Okay, that one's on. That one's on. I think that dual diode is now on. Let's put the lipo there. Put this on the stand. I do like that little stand. You want to see the screen of this thing, don't you? Have you ever used soldering tweezers? How are they different from regular tweezers? I've got some um, plastic ones somewhere, but I can't find them at the moment. Pretty sure that's on. So we've got two capacitors. Let's get the um, circuit diagram. This is, after all, PWM5 live. Where's my schematic? Um, right, okay, now I've got two schematics, this one is probably going to be quite difficult to see, so I think I'll use this one. So what I'm doing at the moment is I am applying these two capacitors, 47 nanofarads, I've got that diode um, because it's half of the bore 56, so this one went on a couple of videos ago I think. Uh, when I was doing the voltage regulator stuff. So that one's in place. These two are the diode I've just soldered on. So in fact, all I need now is the 1UF tantalum. And um, I can power this thing up. And my 12 volts here on VBAT, or 12.7 as it is at the moment, will turn into about 20 volts over here by virtue of these two arms of the charge pump. 
that's assuming the chip is wiggling those two um, lines. Well, it has to be really, doesn't it? So let's do that. Let's get a tantalum. Here's a tantalum. Let's get some um, blue tack. Here's some blue tack. I normally keep my blue tack on this piece of white plastic. But I'll have a little bit of blue tack there for the tantalum. Right, let's do some more comments. Um, what soldering iron are you using? This is the TS100, which runs on anything from 12 to 24 volts. Oh, I've gone, I've lost track of all this. A soldering tweezer is a soldering tip for your iron. Oh, really? You stick it on the end of the iron and, well, it has a lever or something. Never seen that. PWM5 live, the BBC will sue. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, live at mains voltage. No, there's no mains here. My overhead lighting is being powered by uh, 12 volt lead acid, which is outside. My soldering iron is being powered by this LiPo. No mains. I don't do mains. I don't really like mains. Partly because it's dangerous and partly because, well, I'm not really an AC person. I don't do all this 2 pi stuff. I can't be doing with it. I like to stick to DC. And, you know, solar power is my primary interest. So. Uh, right, so one microfarad, 35 volts. Um, positive is that side. Yeah, I've noticed a little problem here. If I bend that, I, I'd intended to bend these tantalums over and bend that regulator over. If I bend that tantalum over, it's going to partly obscure that LED. Whatever. This was never intended to be the final design of PCB. Right, let's have a little bit of leg showing. Yeah, we like a little bit of leg showing, don't we? Oh, come on. What am I doing? That's probably about okay. Let's solder that. Wakey, wakey, wakey iron. And where's my solder? That's gone there. Do you know, I've nearly finished my soldering iron. Soldering. This is actually pretty good. So let's see how this works on through hole. Should be fine. Hmm, maybe it's not quite hot enough. Silly having it on a one minute timeout because it's constantly cooling down. Yeah, I'm fighting it a little bit here. <laughs> and I can't see what I'm doing. It's got more, more difficult actually as time's gone on. And my eyesight's got worse. I do struggle more with soldering and uh, with soldering these days. Mm, yeah, it's not beautiful, but it's probably good enough. Right, cutters. Let's cut these legs off. Yeah, you see that blob of solder is a little oversized, and we've got a slightly. Hmm, can you see that? Let's go for this. We've got a long leg and a short leg now. And the tantalum's leaning over at a slight angle. That tip isn't large enough to have any thermal mass. Well, none of them are. I mean, they're all roughly the same size. They've just got um, different ends on them. I think, really, I should not have a 60-second timeout. I just didn't want the tip to um, to sort of burn out too quickly. but. Or oh, I just need to be a little less impatient. Uh, okay, we're done. We are done. I won't power it up just yet. Let's get rid of these. Where's my offcut thing? There it is. Put the offcuts in there. I don't know why I keep these really, but I rarely use them. Uh, okay, so that can go up there. So that's ready to go. Um, I will power that up in a moment. Where's the two pin plug? Ah, oh, there it is. That's what I've been using to um, power it up. So I'll do that. But let's go to, ah, how good is tantalum versus electrolytic? Now this is something I want to ask you guys actually, because when I redo this so that it's 99% surface mount, probably only the MOSFET remaining as a through hole I'm trying to decide what um, capacitors to use. 
Now I've always used tantalums uh, on here because they're small for high value, but you can get um, uh, ceramics now, these multi-layer ceramics, in very high values, but do they have the low ESR? I don't really know. So some advice on that would be quite handy. How's the stream by the way? Is it still working? Are we still okay? Will you start to sell it again? No, I'm not going to sell this. I don't like queuing at the post office, so. Um, but as I say, it's all open source. You can sell it if you want. You can sell it and you can become a millionaire selling it. Good luck with that. Okie dokie. Uh, you have an orange brown TS100. Yeah, that looks quite nice. But then so does the blue. I believe tantalum is better for noise suppression, but usually lower value than electrolytic. Stream is okay, everything's streaming fine, stream's fine. Sounds like a video or two that, Julian, testing SMD caps. Yes, I don't know whether that would be a video in and of itself. Um, I mean, I am tempted to just get the little sort of rectangular yellow um, tantalum capacitors, but I just don't know whether I could get away with ceramic Ceramic caps are extremely low ESR, but they are usually for 5 volt or 10 volt. Yeah, well, the capacitor on the input to the regulator can go as high as about 15, because it's that's directly on the battery. Um, the one after the regulator, of course, is 5 volts. Uh, wait, where do I sign up to make millions? Well, you, you simply make lots of these and sell them to the world. You'll make millions of pennies. Uh, why don't you use the decoy to drive the MOSFET? Ah, well, it's very clear why I don't do that. Because the decoy uses um, opto-isolators and they draw masses of current. So that wouldn't be any good at all because the whole point of this charge controller is that it is very, very low power consumption. There are probably half a dozen things I did on here to reduce power consumption. Uh, see my comment above. Chris, right, where is your comment above? Oh, no need. Oh, it's all gone off the screen. I would see your comment above if I could find it. Uh, mm, tweezers. I'm sorry, it's gone off the screen. I can't find it. It's all moving too quickly. But yes, um, the things I did to get the current consumption low on this, low clock speed on the CPU, it runs at 500 kilohertz. That's slow. Um, low quiescent current regulator. Charge pump uses very little energy once the capacitor is up to voltage. Um, the LED is switched on for very tiny amounts of time, so it doesn't use much current. Uh, what else was there? Yeah, all the resistors on here, and resistors, remember, burn power. That's what resistors do. They're all high value. So lots and lots of different things on here were done to minimize current consumption. And this thing, even with the LED enabled and flashing, draws on average, because of course the LED when it's on draws about 10 milliamps, but on average it draws no more than one milliamp. You really need a moderator in here right now. Why are people being silly? I can't see many silly comments. Uh, would you like to be a moderator? I recognize your name. Let me see if I can make you a moderator. Nobody make a comment for a bit. I want to make someone a moderator. There we go. Oh, I assume you wanted to be a moderator. Well, you now are a moderator. Bo. But I can't see... Oh, racist comments. Oh, really? Who's making racist comments? I must have missed them. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, if someone else wants to be a moderator, let me know. Put an at Julian Islet on so I can see the comment. Julian After Dark sounds totally different. Probably sound different because this is a different phone. This is the um, Doogee Mix. Normally I'm using the uh, Google Nexus 4. Uh, Trent, I recognize your name vaguely. People are being silly because people are silly. They are. Chris, you'd like to be moderator. Okay, let's do that. I can hit that in time. Here we go, add moderator. Chris is now a moderator. Okay. Have we got enough moderators now? 
Where's the wife? The wife's watching telly, actually. And I did tell her, don't start yelling and screaming because um, you'll be on my video, if you do. Why don't you stream in 1080p? Um, I think it's streaming in 720, isn't it? Which is probably about all that this phone, and actually more to the point, my, um, can I ask your opinion on SMDs? What, surface mount devices? They're wonderful. Um, it's probably more to do with the, um, uh, what am I saying, the Wi-Fi. Now, I'm only going to make moderators of people whose names I recognize. Um, because otherwise, I'll make moderators of people who shouldn't be moderators, and the whole thing will turn into chaos. So we don't need that many moderators. But um, unfortunately, if I don't recognize your name, then I can't really do that. What's the chip on that board? This one is a PIC microcontroller. It's the PIC 12F683. Uh, it's eight pins, it's got five IOs, mm, five strokes, six IOs, and all that stuff. Okay. Right, um, so I think it's time to power this up, don't you? I think we should power it up. The LED will flash, and then I'm looking for 20 volts. Why not an Atmel chip? Yes. <laughs> How many times have I been asked that? Why didn't you use an Atmel chip instead of a, a PIC? Um, OK, here's the reason. Back in 1992, I bought something called the PIC Start. Now, back then, the PICs didn't have flash memory. They were basically EEPROM or one-time programmable. So I bought the PIC Start, and um, I learned PIC, and I didn't know much about um, AVR. I don't think AVR existed back in 1992, correct me if I'm wrong. But I got into PIC, I understood how it works, the Harvard architecture, the uh, RISC, you know, minimal instruction set, all that sort of stuff. And I never really got into C either. Um, I just stuck with assembly language because I enjoy it. I like getting down in there with the nuts and bolts. Uh, AVR came along in the late 90s. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. PIC is awesome. Yeah, PIC is awesome. I love the PIC microcontroller. And it works. Now, someone was saying, um, oh, that's turned itself off now. Someone was saying the other day, why don't I solder this on? And I probably should, really, but I'm not going to. Uh, now, what do I want? I want some power. So let's use this power. Oh, I can't use that power because the wire's not long enough. That's probably just about long enough. So let's put power on there. Now, I've got to get this right way around. Otherwise, no, this has some um, reverse polarity protection. I should, <laughs> I'm not going to do it, but I should be able to connect this the wrong way around and nothing bad will happen. I don't need that component. But anyway, I'm going to connect it the right way around. Let's see if it flashes. And you can see what voltage my batteries are. OK. What is it? One, two. Ooh, about seven or eight. Think about those fast flashes. You can't really count them, but it doesn't matter too much because all this is doing is giving you a sort of rough impression of what the voltage is. So it's about 12.7. And in fact, if I look at my um, thing in the cigarette lighter distribu distribution box, yeah, it's saying the same, 12.7. So we've got about 12.7 volts. The question is, have I got 20 volts on the output of the charge pump? That's going to be more difficult to fathom out. And I need a DVM. Let's look at some comments. Yes. Yes. It's 10 p.m., dude. No, it isn't. It's 5 to 10. I'm not going to finish at 10 necessarily. I'm going to finish when I'm done. I might go all night. Why not? Uh, can't find you on Instagram. No, I'm not in, on Instagram because that's for kids, isn't it? Right. Um, some DVM leads. Um, I really hate my DVM leads. My DVM leads aren't um, silicon. They're, they're really stiff and I don't like them. Right, I think we can move the iron now. Yeah, if you have it in um, 
this mode, which is standby, that should have gone completely cold now. Let's... Yeah, that's completely cold. Um, waggling, it doesn't turn it back on, which is really cool, because I can just move that off to one side, put it on my desk. Uh, right, OK, let's have the multimeter, put it on volts, turn on the light, because that... Oh, I've got some reflection there. That's not good, is it? Let's put it, let's put it there. Let's put it down there. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? And let's see if we've got... Oh, I have to take these banana plug things out. Right, uh, common is there. Ohms, volts, amps and whatnot is there. So we're looking for about 20 volts. Ooh, goodness, I can't see what I'm doing. Small discharge controller, isn't it? But it's going to get a lot smaller. I want this eventually. It's been sunny all day here in Penzance. Oh, well, lucky you. Sunny here in Wales as well. Yeah, that's one of my bugbears about this country. Too cold. Right, that's my ground. Where's my 20 volts? I don't know. It's pause of that cat. Well, let's just pick it off there. Yay! 21.7 volts! Result, people! Are you sponsored by Banggood or something? Mm, only in the sense that they um, supplied me this soldering iron, which is about £100 worth, I think, if you have all the tips. Um, so they gave me that, so thank you very much to Banggood. So it works! 21.7 volts, please answer my question, kicker. Okay, where's your question? Oh, it's gone. I'm sorry, you'll have to ask it again. It's gone. When I actually uh, finish doing all this, I'll concentrate a bit more on the questions and answers. Um, you're okay with putting their name on your desk? Yeah, of course I am, yeah. And JLC PCB are actually uh, at a moderate level sponsoring uh, all videos currently, so they're always going to be somewhere. Uh, these are their pens, which I have started to use instead of my pencil now because of the sponsorship, which is excellent. I think it's great. Uh, OK, what was I going to do? So this is working. Yeah, I was just going to get the um, circuit diagram back in. Let's take this beautiful little soldering iron stand out of the way. This is still sitting there flashing. I'll leave that there because I like that flashing. This actually makes quite a good connection, doesn't it? Even loose. Because they're plated through, you just get a good connection. Please answer my question, the future scientist. Uh, you're green. Uh, why 20 volts if the input is 12.7? I shall explain. This is a charge pump. So here we have battery voltage, um, which is currently 12.7. We lose a little bit in this diode, so we lose 0.6 volts there. Um, then the pick, the comments are actually over my thing now, the pick waggles this line here. Now it waggles it not at a constant frequency because this chip only has one PWM and I'm using it for driving the MOSFET. So actually, liberally sprinkled throughout the code are some exclusive ore. Um, uh, uh, statements, commands, yeah, commands, instructions, yeah, exclusive all, which just simply toggles this line and toggles this line, and they flip backwards and forwards like this. And uh, with these capacitors and these diodes, it bumps the voltage up. The way it works is, uh, now how does it work? Yes, if this is at naught volts, then this diode will charge the top of the capacitor to uh, 12 volts, or thereabouts. Then when this goes high, 5 volts, the capacitor lifts up, the whole of it lifts up. So this point, for a while, goes up to 12 volts plus 5 volts. Of course, that will drain away gradually, but it's enough to tip a load of charge through this diode into this next capacitor. So this one will be sitting at 10 volts. Uh, sorry, no, um, 12 plus 5, which is, what, 17 volts. Then when this pin goes high, that 17 volts will go ooh, up it goes to about 22 volts. So that's why we're sim seeing, and of course we, we lose um, three lots of 0.6 volts in the process, but that's why we're seeing 21, 22 volts here. Was a simple question, nothing, I don't know what that means. 
Uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Someone says he's just here to see his name scroll up. Well, it has. Yeah, so um, this is a very low current method for generating a somewhat higher voltage. So we got about eight or nine volts more here than here. And the nice thing about it is that it's eight or nine volts that tracks the battery voltage um, so that it's always eight or nine volts more than the battery voltage. And that's used to uh, drive the MOSFET. And the reason we need a higher voltage than 12 volts is that the source of the MOSFET here is at VBAT. It's at 12 and a half volts uh, of the battery voltage. Therefore, the gate has to be higher. Right, so that's um, how the charge pump works. So what have we done? I've done the regulator. I did that in the first video. Then I did the, um, uh, the potential divider for the analog to digital conversion. And these resistors, 20K and 82K, very interesting uh, reason why I chose those values. And that is a video in and of itself. So I'll have to explain that in a video all of its own. Um, but it's something to do with not making the maths inside the chip too difficult. Um, yeah, I'm quite dizzy by the chat speed as well. So I've also done this LED, the blue LED, uh, with the wrong value resistor there. So the only bit left to do is the high side driver, which is these three transistors, and the MOSFET. That's all that's left. And then I can actually see if this works as a charge controller. And then we can do some really fun things like... Um, we can have a look at the feedback loop, the uh, thing that measures battery voltage and winds up the PWM or winds it down, depending whether we're over voltage or under voltage. That's fun to look at on a scope, so that's what we'll do. We'll put that on the scope and take a look at it. Okay, let's look at some comments. Uh, right, I suppose I should have my hands in here, really. I could switch to my face, but you won't like it. Oh, actually, I don't know how to do that now. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's my face, and I'm switching back because it's not anything to write home about. Okay. Uh, right, as far as making the whole thing surface mount, there are SOP23 MOSFETs that can drain 6 amps continuous. Well, they probably can. Um, the... IRF3205 can drain something like, oh, I don't know, uh, what was the current on the IRF3205? It's tens of, it's, it's a huge amount, something like 75 amps, but that's only if it's heat synced. Now, this MOSFET is not heat synced. In fact, the whole point of this charge controller is that it doesn't get warm. Uh, why I ask not the Atmel, I'll come back to that. So this charge controller doesn't get warm, so really the MOSFET is massively overspecced. But at 5 amps, this IRF3205, with its 8 milliohm um, on resistance, barely gets warm. It just gets mildly off the chill, so to speak. So that's why I'm using that big fat MOSFET with only 5 amps going through it. It's grossly overspecced. It doesn't even get warm. Well, it just gets slightly mildly warm. Uh, CAN bus related. Yeah, I have, have thought about CAN bus, actually. Although it's mainly for cars, isn't it? Did you ever figure out the solder paste dispensing? Yes, I did. It works beautifully. I can show you if you want. No, I'll do it in the video. Um, I did create an Arduino version. That's true. Um, but that one wasn't very low power. It worked. But because the Arduino... What really needed to be done in that one was that the clock speed needed to be wound down. Because when you run it at 16 megahertz the CMOS circuitry inside the chip is going like the clappers. And of course, the faster you run CMOS circuitry, the more power it uses. So that one, I think, was something like 20 something, 28 milliamps, was it? 20 something milliamps. And this one is one milliamp, one milliamp. It's very low current and therefore low power. When will you finish the Bluetooth supercapacitor speaker? Never. Never. In fact, I'll never finish any project. Why would I finish a project? What is the, um, what's the logic of finishing projects? Think about it. I'm just having some water because I'm feeling a bit uh, thirsty. If I finish a project, 
I can't make videos on it anymore, can I? And uh, that's no good. We can't have finished projects, which I can't make videos about. So no project can ever be finished. And I mean, you know, you know that no project is ever finished because there's always further improvement you can uh, you can do on it. Um, what you're saying basically is when will I get the supercapacitors actually making the amplifier make some noise? Probably not that long now. What's your age? Oh, how old am I? 57, I think. I was born in 1961. How about the penny piano? Yeah, I love the penny piano. Penny organ. But the penny organ is kind of um, a side project to the... I'm reading the comments now, so now, now's the time to comment. Uh, the penny organ is a side project to the vocoder, which I want to get back into. I shouldn't have so many projects, should I? I've got about, I've got seven, I think, now. It's getting warm enough for the e-bike. Uh, no, it was six degrees today. It was bitterly cold. So no, it's not getting warm enough. T. Komoski, yes. The reason I know your name is because you always ask me about the vocoder. But carry on, I like it. I enjoy it. So I will stop asking about the vocoder. No, don't do that. Keep asking about the vocoder. I'll finish it one day. Probably in about 2050. Uh, true MPPT should be next. Well, I did go 90%, 95% along the route of building an MPPT charge controller. Most of it didn't done in the garden. But the trouble is, uh, have you ever met Big Clive in person? Not in person, no. The kid next door grew up and started listening to gangster rap and um, the garden kind of became a no-go area. So I haven't used the garden, although apparently he's gone to college now, so that's good. Um, PCBs for the vocoder. You, well, that's a thought, actually. I mean, now that you know I'm working with JLC PCB, it might be a good idea to use PCBs for the vocoder because that actually became the sticking point in the end. The, uh, the layout of the vocoder just became a nightmare. Uh, the 100 watt LED strobe light, is that the one running on capacitors? That was my latest thought, running a 100 watt LED on those supercapacitors. I think I worked out that you could get about three minutes out of them. Regen braking on the bike, yeah, that's hard. Because that means effectively using the motor as a generator and putting energy back into lithium batteries and all the you know, problems that that in, entails. Uh, some MOSFET with a ludicrously low on resistance. Yeah, I mean, you know, MOSFETs are coming out now with ludicrously low on resistances. But this is a cheap MOSFET. It's easily available. And I know it works. That's the point. You know, if I start using another MOSFET, I've got to test it all again. And that means more time. Time to look at FPGAs. I'd love to look at FPGAs, but um, I haven't really kind of got going on that yet. This is causing a bit of movement, isn't it? That flashing. So you don't need my hands, do you? Wind turbine. I do have a wind turbine. I took it apart as part of an April the 1st video a few years ago. Um, but it's three phase, 48 volts. It's a tricky thing to use. And where do I put it? Where do I put a wind turbine? If I stick a wind turbine up 100 feet above my garden, I'm going to get complaints. I got complaints when I was flying my uh, quadcopter in the garden. You could swap the PIC microcontroller for an ESP8266. Can I though? What about current consumption? ESP8266, that's Wi-Fi, that's gonna gobble the amps. This is one milliamp. When you can find me an ESP8266 that consumes one milliamp while talking to Wi-Fi, let me know. Um, good. ESP8266 is hungry, very hungry. Yeah, it is, because, I mean, it's communicating at 2.4 gigahertz, uh, and it's having to transmit to a router or to a, a Wi-Fi access point. Well, that takes quite a lot of power. I mean, you could have it transmit once every six weeks, but what's the good of that? Julian, did you see Clive being overruled by his own pinball machine? Yes, I did. That was great fun. I used to have fruit machines. Um, I had two fruit machines in my house, not at the same time. I bought one, took it all apart, thought this is great fun. It had a Z80 in it or something or a 68. 
hundred or something. I don't know. Um, then I took it apart so much that, I, well, not that I couldn't put it back together, but I just trashed it. I uh, took it down the tip, and then we moved house. And then I thought, I really miss that slot machine. Uh, I'm going to buy another one. So I went to ooh, where was it? Avon Mouth or something. Bought another slot machine. I love slot machines. I love them. Fruit machines, one arm bandits, whatever you want to call it. I have a fruit machine and a Dalek in my lounge. What, a full-size Dalek? Wow, where did you get a full-size Dalek? Swap a PWM5 kit for one of David Watts' crap clock kits. Uh, well, I probably would if this was a kit, but this is not really a kit. Um, I've got these circuit boards. These are the... Uh... Oh, someone's done a super uh, chat. Funding for a meet and greet with Clive. Yeah, well, I'd need to get a flight to the Isle of Man, which um, would be tricky. Uh, I don't know how much flights to the Isle of Man cost, but it's quite a long way, the Isle of Man. Um, yeah, so I've got lots of these. I'm unlikely to use them all. I'll probably hold um, three or four back, but I might give some of these away. So if you want to build a sort of strange hybrid PWM5 with some of the components through hole, then uh, I'll probably do this as a competition. Now, should I say what I'm think what I'm planning? I, I I was planning a competition where you have to write more than just "I would like a PCB, please." I was thinking of um, something like a slogan. Oh, go on then, I'll tell you. I'm thinking limericks. So yeah, I'll probably have um, a competition for those. What happened to the Night Rider ones? Oh yeah, I put them in a box. So there are also the Night Rider ones. When will the solar system be upgraded to power the whole house? House? Uh, well, never, because in the winter, I barely never have enough power to light my lights, let alone power my house. We don't get any sun. It's not going to work. Uh, make a kit for the PWM5, then post office problem. No post office problem. Um, actually, the problem really, you see, I can post these things in small envelopes. Uh, because they're less than five millimeters thick, I can post them at the minimum cost. But if you go over five millimeters, the post office say, hey, we want more money. And it all starts getting very expensive. Uh, pity you're not here in Africa. Yeah, I went to Africa recently, actually. Um, I went to Egypt in January, and it was quite nice. Are your solar panels main connected? They were. Um, I've got a grid tie inverter. I probably shouldn't admit to that because they're not legal for use unless they're, or there's some sort of accreditation you have to have. But I haven't had that grid tie inverter uh, connected for oh, probably five years now because MOSFET Q10, and I remember it very clearly, keeps blowing because it's a rubbish design. And um, it's hard work taking it apart and replacing MOSFET Q10. And the through-hole plated board has had so many new MOSFET Q10s fitted that it's all starting to fall apart. Uh, oh, here we are. We've got a limerick. There once was a man called Eilert who had a large metal billet. Well, that doesn't work for a start. He said as it flew, it will not go through that window over there, will it? <laughs> pretty good but it's not good enough you're gonna to have to do better but thanks for trying i do appreciate it uh, mcbong yeah that's the sort of thing i'm looking for that's good i like it i uh i did one i think i did one on me did i do one on my... yeah i did do one on my... i'm not gonna read it that will come um that will come when i do the uh, the competition video Try rhyming with Julian. Yeah, there isn't much. Uh, and hooligan is no good. Forget it. So you can't put Julian at the end of a line, I'm afraid. That's not going to work. Uh, if you don't mind EasyJet. No, I don't mind EasyJet. You can fly to the Isle of Man for 40 quid. Yep, yeah, I've no doubt I can. You could probably fly there cheaper than that, actually. Uh, I've seen EasyJet flights for like 19. In fact, I saw one for 17 to Malta because I like Malta. Uh, so I was kind of looking at the prices to get there, and it's so cheap. Julian Boolean. Ah, oh, 
Perfect. So something related to <laughs> Boolean logic. In fact, you could use logic and something that rhymes with logic um, for lines three and four, couldn't you? Yep, 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 yep. Are you planning to buy a 3D printer? Well, um, I mean, Banggood keeps saying to me, what do you want? What do you want? And um, I could very easily say to them, I'll have a 3D printer, please. And I don't imagine it would be a major issue. But I haven't because of space. I just have no space in this room. Literally no space. I mean, you know, I only need to tip this camera. Actually, let me just check there are no bank statements or anything. I only need to tip this camera and you'll see that I have a no space. No space. So 3D printer would be very nice, but it ain't going to happen because I've got no space. Girona, 19 pounds. Yep. Sell programmed pick chips. Uh, I don't think I need to because if, um, now is it David, I think? Uh, is saying he's going to sell uh, kits for the PWM5, then I'm sure he will also sell the pick chips um, on their own. I don't, I don't want to put words into his mouth, of course, but um, it would not be that difficult to sell pre-programmed pick chips. They're actually quite easy to program. Everyone says to me, why don't you use the AVR? Actually, they don't even say that. They say, why don't you use Atmel? Atmel and PIC, of course, don't equate. It's AVR and PIC. Uh, why didn't you use the AVR? It's easier to program. No, it's not. It's no easier to program. You still need a programmer. Okay, you can use an, an Arduino as a programmer, I suppose. You can't use an Arduino. Well, you probably could, actually. Can you use an Arduino to program a PIC? Almost certainly, yeah. You'd have to do all the working out how, how it all works, get all the timings right and all that sort of stuff. Uh, send your question on one of your past videos. Can you please take a look at it? Well... How am I going to find it? Sorry, Eric, I'm not going to be able to find it. You'll have to ask it again now. Oh, John T. Hello, John T. How are you? There once was a poet from Norwich. That's a very good start. Who's the poet from Norwich? Hmm. How do you rhyme with Norwich? I don't know. Did someone mention a shed? Yeah, that wouldn't work for me because... Um, I can't function in six degrees above zero. Move to Banggood's warehouse, no problem with space. And you could have all the gadgets you want. Yeah, I could ask Banggood for an oversized shed. Actually, I wonder if Banggood do um, garden uh, <laughs> buildings. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. But um, if, I need, if I was going to have a shed, I'd have to have a shed with heating uh, and all that stuff, and that would be an expensive shed. What battery types will this charge? Lead acid only. Now, okay, you're probably saying lead acid. Oh, that's so yesterday, but no, not really. There's one in pretty much every car out there. So lead acid is still going strong. Lead acid, 12 volt only, this. And, um, oh, Palulu have a AVR programmer that uses a pick. Yes, that is quite interesting. Um, uh, and yes, this is pulse width modulation. Someone said, why pulse width modulation? Why not MPPT? Well, I'll tell you why not MPPT, because MPPT would need a monster great inductor twice the size of this circuit board. Uh, PWM, you can do on a very tiny scale. This is going to be reduced to one inch. This is three inches. So if you look at that, that's three inches long. I'm going to reduce it down to one inch because I'm going to get rid of these connectors and maybe slightly squish the width a little bit. 22.20 UK time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is. Oh, let's look at my radio control clock, which is still working. Yeah, 20 past 10. Okay, we'll finish at half 10 then. Um, what time is it right now, Julian? It's 2 p.m. in San Diego. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. 22.20. 10.20 in the evening. So AGM is no good with the PWM5. AGM is fine. Absorptive glass mat, I think it means. It's just a lead acid battery with um, fancy separators, I think. What about charging supercapacitor with this regulator? No, this won't charge a supercapacitor. Uh, 
well it might actually but it'd charge it to 13.5 volts so you'd have to get your <laughs> here we go there once was a poet from Norwich who mused while consuming his porridge tis the bane of my life and my kids and my wife not a thing in this world runs with orange brilliant and I actually love the fact John T that orange doesn't rhyme with Norwich awesome do you know if this was the competition you'd have won in fact John T I'm going to give you a PCB because that that limerick is so good extra specially good because the last line intentionally doesn't rhyme with the first two genius fantastic yeah I'll send you a board um what's my favorite tea uh well funnily enough I tried drinking tea recently and I found it all disgusting I've never drunk tea and I've never drunk coffee and I did think It'd probably be a good thing to drink tea because it would warm me up. I actually started drinking hot water for a while. I took my bottle of water and I shoved it on the radiator and it got it up to about 50 degrees and I drank it hot. But I don't know, because I just thought, you know, it might make me feel warmer. There once was a man called Julian. His efforts to dispense solder paste were, well, the rhythm's gone already, Chris, were Herculean, not bad. He resorted to a pump and ended up taking the hump, getting the hump, and now he uses flux core water bore. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not bad. I shouldn't have started this limerick thing, should I? <laughs> that was a mistake. Twenty two twenty two. Love a cup of tea here in Yorkshire. Yeah, I mean I wish I I wish I drank tea. Crikey, it's really warm actually now. I don't know what's going on. I think it's because the central heating's on. Uh da da da. Did you consider putting a row of pads and holes for the pick programming? I think I might actually. I think I might put a five pad thing right at the edge of the board. Um, ah, okay, David's on. I'll come back to that. Once the code is finalized, well, the code's finalized. The code isn't going to change. Um, that version 1.3 that I've, go to my Patreon page and that will take you through to um, a, oh, what's it called? Uh, the thing where you put code up, haste bin, that's the one, and you'll find the 1.3. That's the one where the LED always flashes. That's the final code. Uh, final design is sorted and we can pick all the parts from stores and sort out the kits. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Um, the final PCB, David, are you into the idea of this being a very tiny microscopic one inch by half an inch PCB? Because that's the direction that I'm going in. So if you're OK with that. That's it. Now, what was I talking about? You don't drink tea, I'm leaving. I don't drink coffee either. I'm trying to just drink water. Um, but the devil demon uh, poison keeps getting me. The demon phosphoric acid drink. There was a chap called Julian. <clears throat> Rhythm's a bit off. Now, if, there, if it was, there was an old chap called Julian, that's good. He fried ICs by the million. He made his charge controller open, open and missed <laughs> on earning his billions. Yes, didn't I? Yeah, you've only got four lines there. What happened to five lines? Uh, right. When will you plug the rest of the components into this one? When will I solder them on, you mean? Uh, yeah, um, I'll probably do that in one remaining video. Three transistors, some resistors, a diode. That one I think is a two pin, one in four and four eight. Putting programming pads on the PCU and then PCB and then, well, no, I wasn't thinking of using pogo pins. I was thinking of putting five pads along the edge of the board spaced at um, tenth of an inch intervals. Um, and then if you feel the need to program it, you solder on a five pin header and plug the PIC control, uh, the PIC programmer which is here, the pit kit, uh, you would plug that into the five pin header. But if you never feel the need to reprogram the chip, then you wouldn't ever solder on a header. You wouldn't need to. And then I was thinking, oh, how the heck would you get the, the header off? And I thought, OK, headers are so cheap, you could treat it as disposable. You pull off the plastic uh, thing that's holding the five pins together, slide that off 
and then you'd lift the five pins off individually and you'd trash it of course so yeah i am thinking and that would take up very little space because you just need five small pads on the edge of the board yes you wouldn't be able to use it many times but that's the direction i'm thinking of going the only problem is um this chip only has um eight pins uh the five pins that you need to use for programming are also used for i think one of them's the led so you've got a 150 ohm load on there but with a three point whatever volts offset it might work it might program with that led in place uh, the other one is here you've got 220 puff to ground you've got 20k to ground and you've got 82k to the bat now would that give you a seven in equivalent resistance uh might not actually because that's that's all diodes isn't it so you can probably ignore that um yeah so you'd have 20k to ground and 220 puff to ground now is the programmer going to get cross at having 20k it might not so i mean it might work toggling these two lines from the programmer with these components in place it might work i've never tried it um but we can we can have a go perhaps i'll do a video on that there was an old man named julian who thought he'd made soldering cool again <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty good he plugged in his eye and burnt his finger while trying and end up cooking the fool again oh looking the fool again sorry <laughs> my mouse pointer was over um yes uh it was over the word looking and i thought it was cooking and ended up looking the fool again it's pretty good paul it's pretty good but write that down because when i do my um competition to win the printed circuit boards oh three minutes to go when i do my competition that's the sort of thing that's gonna stand a very good chance because your rhythm's good there was no man named julian the comma's in the wrong place who thought he'd make soldering cool again it's very good there once was a YouTuber called Julian who presented videos on solar PWM. His JLC PCB design had char pumps quite sublime. The rhythm's gone a bit, hasn't it? But no joy since the UK sun never shine. <laughs> I quite like it. But I'm going to be very strict on rhythm. So if the rhythm don't work, it won't win. There was a guy called Isla who got fed up with his pwm5 in an eyelet <laughs> in an eyelet yes i know what an eyelet is kind of a punched hole thing he said that it's a muppet he built now he can power his arduino for peanuts well okay <laughs> um it would be easy to put open jumpers that you could put a solder blob on after programming yes i mean actually may not even be necessary because um you could of course leave these two components out the 20k and the 220 puff and you could leave out that 150 ohm resistor and that of course would isolate these two pins for programming but then the question is you know maybe in the future i release another version of firmware forget it ain't gonna happen this firmware works um really the issue would be can you reprogram it after you fitted all these uh, components and it might work i mean i'm pretty sure i programmed a pick on that dev board with the leds connected and it, it was fine so it might work i don't know i have the pick kit three want to trade for your pick kit two not really because i need to have the pick kit two and the pick kit three both the genuine ones and the uh, clone ones because i might need to make a video one day showing that one works and one doesn't or whatever who knows? 22.30. That's it, folks. This worked. We got um, about 21.7 volts on the forward end of the charge pump. In other words, here, across that one microfarad capacitor, which you, of course, need to rate for... Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Gaston. Sorry uh, that this was at a awkward time. Uh, yeah, you need to rate this capacitor. I think mine is 35 volts. You need to rate that for 21 point, whatever it was, volts that we saw on there. Getting that voltage, that means that I've got enough volts uh, on the gate of that MOSFET to turn it on, um, which is done through this three transistor high side driver. Someone actually said, why don't you have a resistor in the base of this transistor? You don't need one because you've got a resistor in the emitter 
and a resistor in the collector. So you can't get a massive surge of current down that route there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need some water. Um, so yes, that I'm afraid it is the end of the um that's the end of the transmission. Well, unless everyone puts a comment on in the next five seconds saying stay for an extra five minutes. I'll stay for an extra five minutes. Or just say stay. Stay, stay, stay. If I see a load of stays come up. Oh, there's one. <laughs> five minutes. Stay for five. Yeah, okay, I'll stay for five more minutes. Oh, the comments have gone mad. Look at that. Completely. <laughs> That's amazing. 5,000 stays have gone up the screen. That's just bonkers, isn't it? Stop saying stay. I'm going to stay. So I'll stay for another five minutes. So let's have some questions on the PWM5 because that's, after all, what this was intended to be. Should I stay or should I go now? Don't make me sing. That's not a good thing. Oh, I rebooted it. Look, the LED came on for two seconds. That's the reboot thing. And now we're going to get flash, 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 flash. So that means 12 point, I don't know, about 12.5 volts. Yep. 12.5 volts. Uh, you're going to head off. Okay, that's fine. Where are the programming pins? Well, they're not on there yet, but I'm thinking when I go to the smaller size board, um, then I'll have a little row of pins on the edge of the board. Tiny, tiny pads, maybe a tenth of an inch square. Do you version number your boards? Well, I called the original board uh, V1, but no, I'm not really planning to version them. The other one's going to be so different, <laughs> Julian, go away. Everyone else stay, but Julian, go away. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a little row of pads on the edge of the board. Uh, I saw something and I've forgotten what it was. What are your thoughts on the TS100? I actually think this is going to be my soldering iron to move forward with. Because I just love the fact that you can um, run it off DC. I'm into DC. Ah, okay, what have we got? Go to bed, yeah, I do need to actually. Okay, another couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, so when this goes to its new tiny version, one inch by half an inch is what I'm aiming to get down to. And the way I'm going to do that is by putting uh, components on the back. See, on here I didn't put any components on the back, so I'm going to put components. Have you ever met David Watts? No, David Watts lives up north somewhere. Uh, I can't remember where now, but um, no, I haven't met David Watts. Um, I've spoken to Adam Welch on the phone. We had a phone conversation. I've never actually spoken to Clive, but we email quite regularly. Um, there are also other people I email, but nah, you'll have to ask me about that. Um, who's David Watts? Well, David Watts runs a very interesting electronics channel. If you're into electronics, you must have watched David Watts and Adam Welch because they do good stuff. You must call again, Julian. Um, okay, I will. Um, I'll have to get your number. Okay, one more limerick. There once was a geezer called Julian. Rhythm's good. His hot water bottle, Vesuvian. Oh, that's very good. A subject of Lizzie Yet tea made him dizzy. What's the subject of Lizzie? A subject of Lizzie. I don't get that. Yet tea made him dizzy. No logic. I prefer it. Boolean. No logic. Well, the rhythm's gone. No logic. Ah, uh, da, 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 Boolean. I prefer it. You're missing one syllable. Add one syllable to your fifth line, and that will be awesome. Very good. Okay, we've got links coming up uh, for David Watts, uh, his YouTube channel. That's very good. Right, okay, uh, 22.35. I'm going to call it a day. Um, the next video on the PWM5 will be to finish, uh, fit the remaining components. And then we get to watch um, a feedback control loop at work. And that's really quite Fascinating. Have you sold many charge controllers? I sold almost a thousand of the original version. 
So, um, yes, okay, I'm going to uh, say good night. Uh, not sure what my next video is going to be. Oh, yes, I do know what my next video is going to be. It's the unboxing and uh, sort of mini first look stroke initial review of this soldering iron. It's kind of in editing at the moment, but that's going to be the next video I put up probably sometime tomorrow. Okay, bye bye, folks. I've got to now work out how you stop a live stream on a mobile phone. Are you sure you want to stop streaming? Okay.